Now at almost 57 years of age, I realize what a gift it is to us, what a masterpiece it is. You almost feel like you're cheating because he writes so true to the, the poetry and the, the, the melody of, of, a, of Southern women of a certain period. And I grew up with those women. Uh, when I was 10, the women who were actually at Weena Williams' age were in their 80s. And I knew those women well. They were still the choir mistress at the church. They taught me piano. And they all had that, they all s sounded like Amanda Wingfield. For me, uh, Tennessee and his life was uh, really the main point of entry into my understanding of the character. And the more I learned about Tennessee, the more I understood what he was trying to capture in his writing and also what he was trying to escape. And I feel like this character of Tom represents both of those things. Tom is somebody who, who, who wants very much to be what other people expect him to be and what he is uh, conditioned to be for other people. But ultimately he is someone, as Tennessee was, who cannot deny his own authenticity and isn't willing to sublimate or sacrifice um, that for anybody, including his family. And that's a really difficult spot to be in, but also I think it's a very universal spot. Like everyone who's ever had a, a child who cannot survive on their own, the, the nightmare is what will happen to that child when I'm gone. So I have tremendous sympathy for this woman who is on a mission to either get this child socialized and able to work or married to a good man who will always care for her. So to me, she, she is this great heroine who is unfortunately ill-equipped for the job. Cherry is so, she is giving such a loving but also strong performance as Amanda and I felt like I think she might be her mother's daughter a little bit more than maybe we've seen in the past that she has an interior life that's that's a lot stronger than her exterior life and so there are times when that kicks in and there are times when that's um, you know completely disappears. The family is adrift and unable to make contact with the, the parts of the world that that uh, normal people live in. And of course this guy, Jim the Gentleman Caller, steps into it and he ends up being just as weird and just as sort of screwed up and broken hearted and kind of quirky as they are. John took some real um, uh, creative license with uh, the staging of the play and I think that's part of what makes this production um, so special and I think it's part of what uh, really drew people in to the experience up at the IRT. Tennessee Williams wrote about in the introduction that you know memory is real we you know it plays tricks on us and so I, I mean my taste anyway is to be very minimal I, I don't I don't know what to do with things on stage that you don't need or use so it seemed to give me license to just get rid of everything both Bob and I Bob the designer and I are very um, we're big fans of this British artist called Richard Wilson who, who floods uh, art gallery rooms with black oil, sump oil, and the reflection that it creates. And so we were interested to see if we could have a similar effect with the glass menagerie. And so the three rooms, the three platforms, like hexagonal platforms, a bit like a hydrocarbon molecule or something which are floating. And then um, Bob came up with this beautiful fire escape, which is a bit like a kind of fairy tale beanstalk or a unicorn's horn, which just disappears right up. It's an impossible structure, really, but absolutely stunning. And it's where Celia, who plays Laura, and I think that if you walked up there, that's where unicorns rule the world. Of my 30 years, some odd years in the theater, I think this is the most exquisite production that I've ever had the privilege of working on. And that's, that's, I don't mean to oversell it, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This is never a play that I thought like, oh, if I could just do that, and it's turned out to be one of the most gratifying and fulfilling characters and, and experiences that I've ever had. So I think I had ideas about The Glass Menagerie that were completely changed being a part of this.